Uh, I'm sleek, I'm elegant, and I'm beige. I got a DVD ROM that works. Dell Optiplex GX110. The prime example of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it works, let's use it for six years. Ah. Seriously though, um, this is a Pentium 3 machine running I believe at 600 megahertz and 128 megs of RAM and a 40 gig hard drive that I have to slap in there because I didn't have any. Also, have I mentioned something? Holy crap! They asked for outrageous prices on eBay! Including the shipping, well the shipping maybe not, it is kind of a boat anchor, but man! So yeah, if you get one of those, I guess you might wanna... You know, check the price, especially find out that it's not over 200 bucks. Ah. So at the front we got our floppy drive at the very top. This one comes in with the optional DVD reader and it actually works. Two front panel, well I mean two expansion ports for another. Two additional five and a quarter inch drive bays, like optical drives or USB, blah blah blah. This right here is an air intake, even though there's no intake fan. This is the power button with the power LED in it, reset, and the hard drive LED. Designed for Windows, I don't care, Pentium 3, and this is a little secret for later. We feed our power at the top right, parallel, serial, another serial right here, which is, both of them are covered by a, uh, well, dust shield. You just pop them off whenever you need them. PS2 for the keyboard and mouse, two USB 1.1, the VGA connector, I believe this thing has in, uh, dedicated memory, onboard NIC, which is great, and onboard audio, you can forget it, but we have it, and the stupid modem, which seems to be a trend back then, and of course, you can rent it up if you want to. To open this case, there's this little tab right here where you can put the lock, but you can slide it towards the middle, or towards the left anyways, and this unlocks the door. And how do we open the door? Let's find out. Remember that secret button? Well, let's just... Ah, oh, it's stuck! Actually, it wasn't really stuck. It's something that really requires a lot of pressure, so... It's great to have a hand at the back. <laughs> you can push it after. Pop the door, it's L shape, and... Hmm, not bad, I guess you can use this as a drawing board too. Yeah, that is if you don't mind the grooves. So we're inside and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cluttered, huh? Well, we can fix all this. We're gonna start by the power supply. There's this little tab here, you just press it down and the power supply, oh, of course it doesn't do it on video, but press it down, oh, there you go, and the power supply can come right off. Well, anyways, the door does. And there's up to three notches and the power supply holds, himself, holds itself. If it's broken, you can actually put a tool right here and it'll do the trick. So working here is gonna be a pain in the butt. Look at the screws. Um, yeah, it's a really bad design, except it isn't. It is a very good design. Let's see why. This is why. Um, all the models except the GX300 and 400 have these. The 300, I believe, and definitely the 400 I know of, have the ports, I mean the expansion slots right here. So anyways, we're gonna go here and pretty much open this clockwise and watch the whole thing come out as a tray. Look at this, just comes right off. It's better two-handed, damn it. Ah. And there we go. We have five PCI slots and some of them have ISA slots as well and it supports long cards like sound cards maybe some video cards um, if you use a multi io card what are you doing but yeah if you want to do it i guess it works 
We have a bit of an LED. Where is it? Yeah, there's one LED and the other one's on the board. So at least it shows you that you got proper power. And we have a space with an auxiliary LED. So it's kind of a loaded daughter board, actually. <laughs> so now we're inside. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Uh, okay, that's the spaghetti splat. Not much. Um, we're going to get to that later. Under here, we have one tab, two, two tabs, basically. Pry them apart, and the whole thing comes right off. Revealing the heat sink and the exhaust fan, which pulls out the hot air from the heat sink, going here to the exhaust, thanks to a piece of plastic. What I meant by dedicated memory, it looks like we have either eight or 16 or even maybe four uh, megs of integrated uh, memory, but I'm not seeing a graphics chip, so is this dedicated memory for the. Huh integrated graphics that would be a first over here we have two memory banks oh and one of them's populated with 128 megs of ram this is a site you don't see much it is a 3com network interface card so your ethernet port is powered by a 3com cmos battery 100 percent sure that's dead and this is your slot for your expansion ports and it's a pretty long one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, with this bag of tricks, I didn't put the screws yet. I don't know if the hard drive's any good. But, yeah, how do we work on that? There's no such thing as screws. Well, if you go back at the front, we have this little green tab. If you press it down, you can actually pull the cover towards you. And it'll take, it'll take, uh, it'll remove itself quite easily. I'm telling you, this thing's becoming a mad scientist experiment. Holy crap, it looks like a Frankenstein. Anyways, so re to remove these, you simply have to, there's one tab on the left and one on the right, and the whole thing just comes right off. Screw in your optical drive or whatever else you have in there at the bottom, and simply just put it right back in. As for the floppy drive, well, that's a different one. You press down this green tab and you pull it towards you at the same time if you can. Ah, there you go. So if your floppy drive fails, well, it's easy as one, two, three. And I believe it is mounted at the bottom as well. And it's simple to place back, providing, there you go. Yeah, there you go. It's very simple and here's your mechanism for the floppy when it's inserted. So let's throw this bag of tricks together and we'll take it for a spin. Okay, so we're in the BIOS and uh, yeah, I was wrong about the Pentium 3 processor. It's an 866 megahertz. And I believe that's a copper mine then. Um, yep, the BIOS, uh, the CMOS battery definitely is dead. So anyways, before we go ahead and proceed, it's time to take the temperature as this thing's been on for uh, quite a while. So now I'm going to take off the heatsink shroud and fire up this trusty uh, uh, thermal gun and uh, I'm going to check the heatsink temperature the heatsink temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit the Northbridge chipset temperature is at around 46.6 degrees Celsius that's 115.9 Fahrenheit. Huh. Well, it is a heatsink for the CPU, so that's not exactly accurate, but you get the point. And as for the hard drive, it's been on for a while. 30.4 degrees Celsius or 86.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. Runs pretty, uh, pretty cool, actually. Date and time's completely wrong. Well, that one floppy drive, zip floppy support, you can either disable it or enable it, which was um, something Dell offered back then. So if you had a zip drive, providing it still works to this day, well, um, yeah, it supports it. That's great. Of course, one hard drive, even though it says CD-ROM reader, it's a DVD-ROM. But we get the point. Boot sequence, pretty straightforward. 
Okay, I guess thought. 128 megs of RAM, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for your CPU. You can set it to normal or compatible. I don't know what's the difference, but whatever. Integrated devices, we got all these goodies. USB emulation is what I'm using for my wireless USB keyboard, so it'll work on DOS based applications or stuff that normally would not. Uh, use USB right out of the bat and rather look for PS2 connect, uh, connection first. Uh, parallel port, well we have our mini modes and ours is PS2. We'll set it P AT, PS2, EPP, ECP or off. Normally it's supposed to be ECP but for some reason it was a PS2. Uh, PC speaker is the buzzer. Yeah, You can actually turn that thing off. Uh, this is the video digital analog converter snoop. You can turn it on or off. I'm not quite sure what it does. This is, of course, the onboard or automatic if you had a second, uh, well, a, a different video card actually. <laughs> Sorry. And of course, you got your IRQs, yada yada yada. And it's an Ensonic. Um, ah, come on, it's an Ensonic uh, sound card. Uh, okay, that's an unknown manufacturer communication adapter. I guess that's the. Uh, modem and of course the network card here which is actually pretty cool because Dell actually can see them for the most part of course you got your IRQ reservations so if you wanna treat them like VIPs or Donald Trumps then you can go ahead and do that system security yep this thing is wanna cry oh how can I say that it's Vulnerable. <laughs> Num lock on, of course, report keyboard errors. Auto power on is disabled. You can enable it every day so it'll turn on at a specific amount of time. Like right now, if it's off, it'll turn on at midnight, weekdays, or completely off. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Remote wake up, which is power on LAN from LAN which you can send uh, a signal from the, the um, eth onboard ethernet to turn on the machine. Of course, the last recovery. So, let's say for example, if your power went out while the computer's on, well, it'll come right back on. We'll leave it as off. And as a tag, well, we have pretty much nothing. And we can't add anything, so yeah. So let me set the date and time properly, and uh, yeah. And that sounds pretty much right. So, let's go ahead, save our things, and see what kind of operating system we got on that hard drive, if we have any. Well, this ain't good. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ram disk device creation failed to, due to insufficient memory. much it. So I guess uh, we're not going anywhere. Alright, that's much better. Okay. Well, off we go. Is 128 megs of RAM good enough? We'll see. I don't think we're going anywhere. Well, lucky for us, we got another stick around, 128 megs extra. And both slots will be populated because of course this is an 810 and only two two memory banks. Oh alright. That didn't do shit all. Okay, someone's not happy at all. Uh, oh. Yeah, so it doesn't like my RAM stick for some reason. In the closet they go. You don't see any of it, but I do. Let's try a stick of RAM, but I'm not sure. What's the space in it? Uh, oh, 128. Would you look? Would you look at that? PC 133. Even though the 810 goes only up to 100. At least this time, it's a single sided memory bank so memory conflicts are less likely to occur so come on don't be a bitch oh boy 
Okay, well, let's forget about it. Anybody's up for a blast from the past? So for those of you who are new to Ubuntu or never really understood Ubuntu, you get that, uh, there you go. This is how Ubuntu used to boot back then. So, yeah. Just imagine how much has changed since then. And let me see here. Uh, is there a copyright? Nope. Uh, I think this was 10 years ago, actually. About nearly 10 years, yeah. We're talking to about a 9 or 10 year old distribution right there. See how things have become? And we take things for granted these days? Well, it wasn't like that before. You know, the entire distribution is being loaded on my single 128 mega RAM. Because Mr. Picky Bitch could take another one. You know what? It's been around half an hour and we're still here. So, yeah. I don't think we're going far. So unfortunately I have to interrupt the whole shenanigan and we're going to wrap things up. So there it is. This is the Dell Optiplex GX110. And despite being a very reliable, reliable machine, it just comes to show that age does take its place. And unfortunately, while uh, with only 128 megs of RAM, this one, you're not going to go far really, uh, unless you're using those super, super tiny Linux distributions or assembly language operating systems. But if you manage to bump it up to 256, I guess an old Linux distribution would help. But thanks to the Intel 810, I believe this is the 810E, we have option to support up to 512 megs of RAM. So two sticks of 256 and you're all set. And you can actually run something eh, halfway decent. Or else you can actually just go period correct and um, well, with a good graphics card, I don't know about the integrated uh, graphics, even though they has, it's supposed to have dedicated memory, um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to uh, game too well without having a uh, proper um, video card. So anyways, as for reliability, these machines are tanks. They do not want to die. And this has been something that Dell always has been known for, uh, for the most part. They've been reliable machines and they've always seemed to have the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They've often used many designs like this for their Optiplex lines back then. And this one, I believe, has been stuck with them for nearly seven years. So it just comes to show Actually, is it seven years? Actually, I'm wrong. It was six years. But anyways, that's besides the point. They make their generations last for quite some time. We had those beige one. We had the clamshell. We had the BTX updated, well, ones anyways. Like the Optiplex 740, the 745, the 520, the 620. And now we have the newer generation, which actually looks pretty badass, actually, if you ask me. And this has been something with the Optiplex, it's just so easy to modify. Um, let's say for example if I swap out the board with the GX115, I can just get myself a little badge, pop it out, put the new one in, and boom, it's a 115. That's how, that's how cheap it is to make. It's, it's very cost efficient. So that's great. So in terms of reliability, this boy, it's a 9. Customizability. Hmm. Even though, yes, it does support up to 512 megs of RAM, the chipset supports up to four memory banks, but this bad boy limits you to two, which is kind of it's kind of stupid. But in the same sense, if it supports up to 512 megs of RAM, anyways, according to Wikipedia, that is two sticks of 256. So yeah, you maxed out the machine spec. I mean, yeah, you could try a gig, and if you're successful, let me know. If you already, if you were successful, that'd be great to know. But yeah, even though two RAM banks, it's kind of something I 
don't like, especially in modern machines. I guess for that time, it would have been something you. It would have been something decent, I guess. And as far for expandability, well, you just saw the perfect opportunity. That easy. Well, one of the one of the sweet spot of that with the PCI tray removable and easy to install. Also, let's not forget the expansion and everything. So this machine is actually quite customizable. So definitely, that's very good. But yet again, you're a little limited. But in overall, it's a seven. Gaming. Look, Optiplex are business machines. This thing is not really designed to game. Um, in terms of capability, can it game? Well, if you go period correct and get yourself a decent PCI video card, period correct or not, like a Radeon 9200 if you want to go period correct, that actually could be a great contender to make to play those period correct games. But if you're trying to play like Fear 1 or Half-Life 2, you're going to see this thing struggle a lot. But other than that, even though it's not designed for gaming, you could be pretty surprised what it, the, what this thing can do. And of course older games designed for like the Pentium MMX, that's, you can just leave it as is and you're good to go. So with all that said and done, it's a 6. Multimedia. Hmm. Like I've mentioned before, it's a business machine or anyways it's business oriented that is it does not have an onboard audio it has a dedicated sound card instead which I believe Dell did have the option to add if not you can just buy your own and you know what back then having a dedicated sound card was actually even better because the onboard audio would take a lot from the CPU Especially, that is actually true in the Pentium 2 eras, but the Pentium 3 also could have taken a little bit of a performance hit. So that's actually not that bad, but, you know, it plays music, you could record stuff with it, actually, it could, you could get away with it, but, you know, if you want to try to do something like video editing and all that, yeah, with that, it's a 7. So in total, this bad boy gets a 7.5 out of 10. Even though, the custom, even though it's extremely reliable and you can actually get away with most of it, even though you're limited with the memory banks, but like I've mentioned before, if it supports up to 512 megs of RAM, having four RAM slots, what's the point, you know? But other than that, businesses did enjoy them a lot. And actually, this thing, I've been looking for many, many years to find another one to review. And I finally got my hands on one, and I'm not letting it go. You know, even though I have a rotating fleet, this thing is just a collector's item. You see them on eBay asking outrageous prices, and outrageous prices for, well, the shipping, uh, you're kind of shipping in boat anchor, so, mm -hmm. But in overall, they're great machines, and uh, if you're a collector and you manage to come across one, I check it out. As for the price, it's worth a it's worth a look. Anyways, if you can manage to collect it, good for you. Anything from the Optiplex GS GS Plus all the way up to the GX240, I mean the GX400. That is my bad. Except the GX300 and 400 have a different front, uh, where the 300 have a few more grills at the front. And the 400 is completely uh, more grills and it's black, so yeah. And they don't have the PCI removable trays like I've mentioned before. So if you have any questions, comments, anything I've overlooked or not looked at this particular machine or have any stories you'd like to share, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, until next time, stay bold and take care. I'll catch you next time.